What's up, YouTube? I'm Valentin Nemer, and this is a gore review of Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 is a tactical shooter by CI Games. The setting is dark and gritty and the game seems to have some emphasis on gore, so the main question in this video is, does Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 deliver? Do we finally have a properly bloody, messy and responsive sniper game? Let's find out. I'll be reviewing every aspect of the game's gore effects and the score will be set based on 4 categories. Body damage, environment, animations and sounds, the fuel. As for the big mutilation, you have a gory variation for the head. The looks are good, you see a part of the face, some blood on it and the tongue makes it look pretty disturbing, which is something I really liked. However, there are issues. As I mentioned, it is a gory variation, meaning you literally have only one. This one variation will be activated only on the sniper rifle kill cams. Shoot someone from point blank with a 50 cal, all you'll see is a decal. Shoot someone with a shotgun, once again, decal. And there is no other dismemberment or gory variations. The one and only head variation is all we have. So what's the response for explosives? Absolutely nothing. Well, can the non-dismembering damage be a redeemer? No. While you will see decals at the point of impact and on the exit wound, the functionality is very bad. The wounds will disappear in 10 seconds without any option to change that. And you'll see wounds only on the head. If you shoot any other body part, you won't see any response. And how about the executions? You also see nothing. You just sliced someone's femoral artery in the throat, you won't see any wounds, blood or anything like that. So as you can see, despite the flashy head variation feature, the body damage is very weak and do not deliver something even remotely close to a basic response. You have response teams on impact, and blood pools below that characters. The looks are not bad and will deliver decent response, however there is one major issue, which is unfortunately a very common one. Stains will be spawned only if there is a surface right behind the character. If there is nothing, you won't see any stains. That massive blood puff on impact? It will simply vaporize. You blew most of a character's head off, bits were flying everywhere and blood was splashing and spraying from where his head used to be. The bits will disappear shortly and none of the blood splashing and spraying will leave any stains. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Blood puffs, splashes and spray effects are supposed to represent blood being spilled from the character on the environment. And when blood gets spilled, it will leave stains. I'm not expecting to the drop accuracy of splash to stains, though that is always welcomed. However, stains have to be spawned every single time you see blood spilling and the stain has to be proportional to that splash or spray. The blood pools are somewhat of a redeemer here though. While you will see characters peacefully sleeping without any wounds on them, they'll be peacefully sleeping in a puddle of their own blood. The puddle itself looks good, however, there are several issues. One part of the puddle will pop up immediately, while the other part will expand and vanish. And they'll always spawn below the same spot on the torso, even if the one and only shot the character took was in the head. Now how's the mess in the long term? Bodies will spawn based on distance, so as long as you're in the area, all the bodies will stay. 
The issue is that the distance is about 200 meters, so bodies will respawn on you when you're clearing larger areas. As for the blood, it has a pretty low threshold of about 10 stains. Even though the body damage mechanics don't deliver even a basic response and the blood spilling is very weak, you could still get a decent sense of an aftermath if the bodies and the blood pools would have an option to stay. And as I said repeatedly in the series, that stuff should be configurable. If your PC can handle it, you should absolutely be able to see the full aftermath of every body, blood stain and wound. You have response animations on impact, a disabled state, death animations followed by ragdoll physics, and executions. The response animations are very basic, they have some weight to them, but nothing exceptional. As for the death animations, they are also not particularly interesting. The animation itself is not affected by physics, and those animations are pretty short so they won't deliver a brutal response either. What could deliver interesting response is the disabled state, which looks pretty good, but as you can guess, it has some serious issues. The disabled state will last only 25 seconds, but the bigger issue would be activation. The disabled state can be activated only on neck shots. If you shot a character anywhere else and he didn't die immediately, you shrug off that wound and keep running as though nothing happened. But most shots will simply make most characters insta-drop. A single shot in the lower torso will immediately kill the character. It's a shame. The game has the disabled state function I talked about so much in the series, and it could deliver solid response if it was activated based on a damage threshold lasted for a decent amount of time, and shots in most areas of the body would send characters into the disabled state instead of insta-killing them. Changes of behavior and a large variety of possible animation responses are extra important in a game with a focus on long-range sniping. When you're shooting characters from 2 or 300 meters away, animation responses are the main thing you'll see and this game underdelivered in that aspect big time. You have response sounds on impact, characters will react when hit, on death, who command during the fight, and moan during the disabled state. The sounds you hear on the headshot kill caps are very gory, and the knife impact sounds on executions will deliver too. The character responses, however, are not as good. The screams and hit reactions are very short, and characters will speak in English with an accent, with no option to make them speak their native language. Reporting casualty. I'm taking fire. Shit, it's one of our friendly If you shoot or stab someone, there should be a hole exactly where you hit them, no matter where you hit them. If you see blood being spilled, you should see proportional stains. Those are two very basic mechanics that are absolutely necessary for a responsive feel. So while we do have blood pools, basic responses animation-wise, a disabled state that could potentially be awesome, and one flashy feature of a single mutilated head variation, that is not nearly enough to deliver a responsive experience. So the score for body damage is 5 out of 30. The score for environment is 12 out of 30. The score for animation and sounds is 15 out of 30. I give the feel a score of 4 out of 10. So this gives the core system of Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 a score of 36 out of 100. While the setting is dark and gritty, the primitive bodies are badly mutilated and the cutscene gore is good, the game does not deliver when it comes to seeing response in the gameplay itself, where that stuff matters the most. Core aside, would I recommend it? There were several things I loved about this game. The East European setting is absolutely awesome, 
and very well executed. And I love the fact that for the most part the levels are open and you have several possible approaches in each mission. However, the game has many issues. The open world itself is simply boring. All of the action will happen only in outposts and points of interest and you'll never encounter enemies outside of those. No patrols, no interesting random events, nothing at all to make the world feel alive. The AI is not particularly interesting and after several hours of gameplay it will become very predictable. That coupled with the fact that enemies will always be at the same positions badly hurts the replay value. And at its current state the game has numerous bugs. Some are visual but others very much affect the gameplay. I do think there is some fun to be had with this game if you like the theme and the setting but I would not recommend getting it at full price. That's it for today. Let me know how I feel in the comment section and if you enjoyed the video subscribe and share it around. If you wanna support the channel and help keep the videos coming the Patreon link is in the description below. Until next time.